Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How you guys and girls doing? All you beautiful people, I hope you're doing great. Please check out the description box for all the nice links. As always, also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Uh, and here we are, we're going to keep working on this nice little, um, nice little texture selector thing that we got going. Um, and we're going to need a few things. Now, when the mouse is within this, this little... Uh, so the outer bounds that we have, that's when we're going to kind of update and stuff like that. So we're going to make sure that we only update when we're within those bounds. So I'm going to make a boolean here and I'm going to call it act active. All right. And I'm going to make sure that is set to false in the beginning. Also, I'm going to make a SF rectangle shape called selector because we're gonna have an internal selector just like we have outside with that little box moving around uh, we're gonna have that in here and then we're gonna make a SF vector 2u grid mouse post grid all right so I'm just gonna call that mouse position grid as well just because we're gonna need that for the internal selector uh, and then we're gonna need a SF int rect texture rect okay and that's what we're gonna get returned later on so now we have a few things we can play around with and all that stuff uh, but let me just do this um, access source okay and I'm just gonna do a const bool reference uh, get act active so we'll just, we'll just check if something's active or not um, and before I get out from here, I'm going to do a const SF vector 2F because I'm guessing we're going to need some type of a, or 2I, I think we're going to need the window position mouse post window for, for this whole update thing. So let me go into the CPP file again and just paste that in here. Um, and then what did we have? We needed accessors. Accessors. So I'm just going to grab this. For some reason, I can't. IntelliSense, whatever it's called, is not really working for me here. So I can't really auto-define these. But no no needed to worry. Because we just do it a good old-fashioned way. There we go. Okay, so once we have all this stuff ready, all I'm going to do is return, uh, if I can spell this, active. So we just make sure that is that. Also in the beginning here, I'm going to say this active equals false or at the bottom. And here we're going to work with the selector. So this is the actual character sheet or no, uh, the uh, character sheet, the texture sheet. And this is going to be the selector. So this selector dot set position and it's going to start off at X and Y. All right. No problem. Same shit. Uh, this selector dot set size okay and this is where we're gonna have to get some stuff in here so I'm gonna have to get a float a grid size in here um, or should I do the unsigned that doesn't really matter we'll just do the float grid size and copy this put it in here put it in here right here all right, it's going to be a little copy over here. No big deal, yo's. And since this is the texture selector, it would be easy for us if we just kept that grid size in here, saved it so we could use it in other stuff. Now, saving it is good because we don't have to send it in as parameter all the time. That also takes up some space. So, you know what? Float grid size. We'll just we'll just save that in here for ourselves. And I'm just going to go ahead and, and set that grid size here before everything. So let's actually, let's put these up at, at the top here. Just, you know, keep stuff organized so you know what the hell is going on. So I'm just going to put this at the top here as well. And I'm going to go ahead and put this grid size equals grid size. Okay, I'm just going to do that. And then set size sf vector vector 2f 
like that. Boom, bar bing. Let's go. Grid size. Grid size. There we go. Good shit, good shit. Now, once the selector size is set, uh, we're going to say this. Selector.set fill color. Just the usual, transparent. Transparent. And then we're going to set the outline as well. The outline thickness to 1.f usually works. Line color. I'm going to set it to SF color red. Just to differentiate it from the outside. And then we set everything and it should look just fine. I think it's I think it's okay. I think it's all right. And we got the active here as well. Now the update, we're gonna do this. If this active, all right, if it is active, uh, then we're gonna do a bunch of stuff. But up here, if this uh, bounds dot global get global bounds dot contain. So if the outer bounds contains the mouse position that I'm about to send in. Uh, static cast. Now I don't like casting stuff too much. SF vector 2F uh, mouse pos window. That means that yeah, we're casting it to float to vector 2F float, and we're checking it if it is contain if it's contained within th those bounds if it's inside those bounds, and if it is. We'll say this active equals true. Else this active equals false. So we're just that's gonna control the active status of that. Now if it is active, we'll do a bunch of stuff in here. Um we'll set the position of the the little selector thingy. First of all, I'm gonna make sure I, I draw it so I don't forget that. Draw this selector. All right. And now once we do that, we need to think how it's going to be. Let me just run this once just to see that it works. Uh, okay, there you go. Caught some errors. Probably something you guys saw. Error list. No overloaded function takes five. Oh, 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 okay. All right. Uh, of course, this state data grid size. All right, there we go. Probably this as well. Update. Oh, yeah. Mouse position. This mouse post window. Okay. Make sure it's window there, not view. Because we need the... We need window because uh, we're not going to be working with the views for that one. So, that does it won't depend on any type of view or anything like that. So, now we have the selector there. But it's not really moving with the mouse. This is the way I want it to. So we're going to just, oops, we're just going to go ahead and, and fix that. But first of all, I'm going to go into editor state. No, uh, never mind, never mind. It's already updating. Um, okay. Okay. And I am recording. Yes, we do have some time. So if it's active, we're going to say this selector dot set position. Now this is where it gets interesting. We need to update the grid position. So this mouse position grid, the internal grid position for this is very different than what it is outside. That's why we have a different variable for that in here because it will depend on where the outer bounds is positioned. So it's gonna be a little different. It's gonna be a little offset there. Uh, so I'm gonna use this bounds that get position dot x minus no I think it should be the other way around um, mouse post window dot x minus this and then we're just gonna static cast that to what is this an integer this is an unsigned so at least this will be a integer here Uh, so just go ahead and do a minus right there divided by 
this grid size. Now that will become a float. We do not want that to become a float. So I'm going to have to static cast this to a unsigned. Um, pretty sure this can be a little weird. But, you know, for now, just for testing purposes, doesn't really matter. We'll just we'll just keep it like this. Um, doesn't really matter. I think it will crash, though, if it goes below zero. So I'm going to make sure it doesn't do that. Um, but we'll set the position to... Let's see. Set the position to... This bounce get position dot x plus plus this mouse plus grid dot x multiplied by this grid size. Now that has a whole bunch of stuff going on right there, but but that should work. We got to do the same thing. For the Y right here and just close that down Y Y and then we're gonna have to static cast all of this shit so it's proper uh, but at least that should work and it should set the position to somewhat correct values we'll see this will probably crash most probably yeah that isn't really that isn't really working just yet um so we get the position we plus it to the mouse position let's just try this without all of this crap right now let me just try that and we'll see how that works so we'll divide it by the grid size uh, and let's run that let's see if something happens pretty sure it should should look a little weird but it is the thing is it's it's kind of moving before I I reach the end of it so we were on the right track here with that stuff I just think I had the parentheses in the wrong spot uh, we need some parentheses right here uh, there we go and I'm pretty sure we don't need wait we didn't need oh my god I'm so dumb we don't need parentheses over there we just need them in the beginning there so let's try this again Hopefully that will work so we can move on. Yep, now it's it's proper. So now the internal internal boxes are moving. You see that? But they're not moving out here, so we're still okay. Uh, yeah, it's not crashing, but it's giving us some weird values when we're outside. So before I end the video, let's just make sure we, we handle that. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. So we are taking the mouse position of the window minus that. Okay, it just goes weird. You know what? We'll handle that in the next one. It doesn't really matter. It's pretty. It's a pretty annoying fix. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to do that. I'll probably have to do this calculation above and then do all that kind of stuff. But we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Um, but for now, this is fine. At least the selector thing works. In the next video, we're going to handle that problem. Also, we're going to handle the the cursor selector, the outside selector, so it doesn't move when we're inside, inside here. And then we'll just make a little if statement up here. But there you go, guys and girls. Thanks for watching. Hope that's cool. Uh, we're moving forward. Soon we'll be able to select textures like that beautifully and add them to our map. And then also we're going to make sure we can hide the texture selector uh, nicely right there. So it's going to be pretty cool. But there you go, guys and girls. Thank you so much for watching sticking with me and all that. Keep working hard. Check out the description box for all the nice links and I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. All right. Bye-bye.